like to just stay busy and do what has to be done and uh, think very positive about everything. I'm, if I'm approached with a problem, just go for it and solve it. Don't wait, because it's still gonna be there. I like to solve it right away. That's, uh, and I taught my children the same way. <laughs> when I have a problem, I say, oh, just do it. Do the best you can, and if it's wrong, you learn from being wrong, but do it till it's right. I'm Tain Ong Chan, and I'm the owner of the walk shop which is located in the heart of Chinatown, 718 Grant Avenue. We were very poor, what you call dirt poor in, in Albuquerque. Uh, my mother, oh, hardworking, had to with nine children. She had a grocery store and uh, my father started a restaurant. I said, no, this is not a life for me. As soon as I'm of college age, I'm getting out of here and I'm gonna go far away so that I don't have to babysit and work in the grocery store. That's what upset my mother. She was not happy with my decision, but this is something that would be my personality. I had to do for myself. This was in 1972 when President Nixon went to China and there was a big interest in Chinese food and how it was prepared. There I was a need for walks and products from China and I wanted to fill that need, but I needed another location, I needed a bigger store, and I needed it in Chinatown. And I happened to know about a location that might be available and I walked in and there he is, a Mr. Kit Louie, elderly gentleman, had been in business for maybe 30, 40 years, one of the first immigrants to Chinatown, and I asked him for the location if I could rent his place. And he looks at me like, what an odd lady. How, I mean, what are you thinking? You're not a Louis, how could you, you know, even ask? That's not kosher, that's not done here. And he said, where do you come from? And I said, Albuquerque, New Mexico. He said, who are your parents? And I said, Ong Siu Long. He flipped out. He said, you mean you're Ong Siu Long's daughter? And he said, I know your parents. He said, oh my goodness, they did a wonderful thing for a family member of ours in Albuquerque. Long time ago, before you were born, you wouldn't even know about it. He said, yes, I will give you the store. I could not believe that, what he said. He said, you will be in this building as long as I am here. And he was true to his word. I called my mother that evening. I said, Mom, what is he talking about? He said that he knew you and Daddy, that you did something. She said, oh my goodness, that's such a long time ago. There was a family member, a Louis family. He passed away here, passing through Albuquerque, going to Texas for a job. So because we were the only Chinese family, second Chinese family there in Albuquerque, they inquired and wondered if we knew this gentleman, and we said no. So I wrote a letter to the Louis Family Association in San Francisco saying what to do with this young, this gentleman that has passed on here. The Louis did not know who he was. Um, my parents said they'll take it upon themselves to give him a decent burial. I'm Sadis Sukimoto. I'm the third oldest grand child of Lin and Wing Ong. My memories of Memorial Day included going to the cemetery there in Albuquerque. We would visit several grave sites of my grandparents, friends, and family. And that included one special grave that was in a, a different part of the cemetery, and that was the grave site of Lo Louis Bach. Because that section of the cemetery wasn't as well kept, he, uh, my grandfather would clean the headstones with his hands, I can remember that. My grandparents would leave uh, flowers for Lo Louis Bach, and they included him as a member of their family. We were adults when we went there because the grandkids didn't want to go there anymore. They were growing up, so after Daddy died, it was Mama, Jeannie, and me. We went to to about 13 grave sites. People we don't know, but Mama knew. On all this. <laughs> well, we brought the same type flowers for everybody. They were potted flowers, and I dug into the grave and put the pot there so it would last year long. 
And then, every year we came, we knew it was our grave because of the pots that were there. <laughs> right, Jeannie? Yeah. yeah. Okay, turn to your left, see? This is the road we used to come to, and right in this area where this pile of dirt is, is where Mr. Louis was buried, but he is no longer there. And I remember this very distinctly because of that two-story building that was Caddy Corner. My dad couldn't afford one like those tombstones there, so he made one out of concrete and wrote in Chinese letters the man's name, which Mr. Louis, I do not know his full name, where he's from, the day he died, with a Chinese man. It was embedded in, in the concrete. He was wearing a yellow hat and his outfit was green. It was very beautiful. Anything that's made like that is so artistic and creative. That was what Daddy could afford, and that was better than any boxed stone. They knew that hard work, honesty, being good, treating others like you want to be treated, that's the way to be, and it will pay off. It's just common sense, and it's just being good people. And the Louis Family Association remembered that, and because of that, thank my mom and dad for their good deed, I was able to acquire that store. It was through their goodness of their heart, their generosity, their kindness, that I was able to get this store. Otherwise, I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't even imagine where I'd be without that store. But that, oh, that, I walked into something.